It is so hard to be prepared for something that you don't know is even coming. For example, the people who came to work in New York City in the World Trade Center on September 11, 2001, had no idea what was about to happen. If they had known that terrorists were going to attack their buildings, they certainly would not have come to work that day. Suppose you lived in an area of the world where an army had hidden landmines, or an area of the world where there, it was crawling with poisonous snakes. Would you go strolling around there? Certainly not. And you would be grateful that somebody warned you that those things were in place. Roman emperors in ancient times, they used food tasters. A taster, if the taster didn't get sick when he ate his food, then the emperor felt safe to eat his meal. Poisoning was a prime way of murdering foes or enemies back then. No emperor wanted to die unexpectedly by an enemy. For some bad things in life, we do get warnings. We know that hurricanes or typhoons now are tracked, and we have time to pack up and leave and get out of the dangerous areas to save our lives. We're always happy to have a warning and anything that would save us from possible death and destruction. Now imagine the biggest event to ever happen in the history of the world. It's the second coming of Jesus, and it will break on the world as an overwhelming surprise, but it doesn't have to be that way. It doesn't have to be an overwhelming surprise because we have a Bible, and the Bible tells us what is going to happen and how we can prepare. So we already have this knowledge to protect us and prepare us, and to keep us from death and destruction for eternity. Jesus himself has given us a whole series of signs to watch for and let us know when this event is going to take place. While Jesus gave the signs to his disciples to warn them, he also said, let not your heart be troubled. I will come again. He's already told us this is going to happen. In other words, these signs must happen as part of the plan of salvation before he will return. We aren't to fear what is coming because God's people will be protected. Great news for us. Shortly before Jesus was crucified, he took his disciples to the top of the Mount of Olives and he sat down with them watching the sunset. As he looked across the valley to Jerusalem, he pointed to the temple. It was one of the wonders of the world and the pride of Israel. Jesus prophesied that when the Roman armies attacked, they will not leave in you one stone upon another. Well, this was shocking news to the disciples. They thought the destruction of the temple must surely be the end of the world. Otherwise, in their mind, the temple was simply too solid to be destroyed. The disciples heard Jesus describe the de destruction of Jerusalem by the Roman armies. And it happened right on schedule in 70 A.D. The disciples couldn't comprehend what Jesus was telling them. They asked in Matthew 24, 3 to tell us when these things be and what will be the sign of your coming and the end of the age. Some translations say the end of the world. Isn't that questions that you would have? Wouldn't you want to know when things are going to end? I think these are very natural questions that all of us have. And the disciples spoke up and asked these very pertinent questions. Jesus gave a masterful presentation of signs in miniature of the first century that would precede the destruction of Jerusalem. 
then gave the signs on a global scale that would occur in the last centuries before he returns. Many signs are happening at the same time in different parts of the world. Jesus listed more than 20 different signs for his disciples. We're going to look at 15 of those today and let you decide how near we are to Christ's second coming based on these signs. He gave us in Matthew 24. So if you want to reread that chapter, that's a good Sabbath afternoon. And you can look at some of these signs that are pointed out in that chapter. The first sign is the rise of false Christs and false prophets. In Matthew 24, 24, Jesus said, For false Christs and false prophets shall arise. The latest Gallup poll shows a significant increase in the belief of the supernatural. Over half of Americans believe in psychic or spiritual healing and extrasensory perception, or ESP. And a third believe in haunted houses, possession by the devil, ghost, extraterrestrial beings, and clairvoyance. There are over 30, oh, over 3,000 astrology columns that are in newspapers, and many people base their financial and even medical decisions based on advice of astrologers via their daily horoscope. Now, we say newspapers, but I'm referring to digital today. Most newspapers come on the internet or digital. So, yes. You can find easily on the internet the 10 best and most accurate astrology sites. I just can't imagine you needing to search there when you have a book called the Bible that tells you the truth from the source of the creation of the universe, and yet you would go and depend on what man says and these sites to tell you what they think. Uh, It just astounds me. Psychic Source is the number one site at a dollar per minute, so you already see the motives there, a dollar per minute to give you a reading. They advertise that you can talk with real psychics when you call. They can do angel card or tarot card readings. They are the industry standard for dependability and accuracy. Brad Pitt, Khloe Kardashian and Kim Kardashian, Taylor Swift, George Clooney, Jennifer Lopez, Bruce Springsteen, all use psychics. Just in case you thought maybe only crazy people or or, uh, ignorant people or uneducated people use psychics, no. There are many, many people prone to use psychics. How unfortunate they do not use the truth source, the Bible. Sign number two is international conflict. Matthew 24, verses 6 and 7 tell us, You will hear of wars and rumors of wars, for nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. There will be world wars before Jesus returns. During the last century, there were two world wars. World War I, where there were 20 million deaths. World War II, about 50 million deaths. In addition to global conflict of these two major wars, the world has also experienced the Korean War, the Vietnam War, the Iran-Iraq War, Indochina and Algeria War, Bosnia and Herzegovina, the tribal wars in Africa. So we see there have been many wars and they're increasing. We can't blink an eye before we think that we're gonna be in another war very soon because we teeter on the fact that people now have the power and the technology to create havoc and devastation through war. The 20th, 20th century was the bloodiest of all centuries in history And it continues with, who would you say I'm going to say? Russia invading Ukraine. 
right before our eyes while we live. We get to experience it over and over again. Bringing on the largest refugee crisis since World War II. It's not going to stop there. China is determined to rule the world. As Jesus looked down through the centuries, he also saw distress of nations with perplexity, the sea and the waves roaring. Well, let's talk about tsunamis. In the entire history of the world, tsunamis averaged about 10 every 100 years. In the mid-1990s alone, tsunamis picked up activity averaging 11 per year. In one three-year period in the 1990s, there were 18. The nine-magnitude earthquake and tsunami in the Indian Ocean on December 26 in 2004, we know took over 200,000 lives. Prophecy tells us all these things would become very frequent and it is coming true. How about earthquakes? February 4th, 1976 in Guatemala City, 7.5 magnitude and 30,000 people died. Later that year, in July, China had a devastating quake that killed 255,000 people. February 6th, a 7.8 magnitude earthquake struck Syria and Turkey. The death toll so far is about 50,000 and counting. November 20th, 2022, a scientific report states seismic activity is increasing both on the ocean floor and on land. Earthquakes are emerging even in regions where they have never been before. Jesus accurately predicted this. Sign number three is the potential for world destruction. Never before in history has man had the capacity to destroy the entire earth. Thermonuclear war is new in the last 78 years. It began with dropping the first atomic bomb in, on Hiroshima and Nagasaki, Japan, on August 6th and August 8th in 1945. Now many nations have the power of nuclear weapons. Jesus looks down through the ages and says, he would come to destroy those who destroy the earth. So it's pretty clear that the world will experience more devastation of nuclear warfare of some type. Sir Charles Snow, a British scientist and writer said, we know with certainty of statistical truth that if enough of these weapons are made by enough states, some of them are going to blow up through accident, folly, or madness. China, North Korea, France, India, Israel, Pakistan, Russia, the United Kingdom, and the United States possesses a total of nearly 13,080 nuclear weapons. It would not take much for somebody with an attitude to put an end to this. And, and the state of mental competency of most people right now, it wouldn't take much at all. So we live in a society where we're seeing all the things that God told us. He told us it would be like birth pangs. That's the words he used because if you are a woman or know of one or have one as a mother and she bore you, <laughs> she knows what birth pains feel like, right? It's the pains that you get before the actual event occurs where you get that glorious moment of having a baby. Well, God says before Jesus comes in that glorious moment to bring us home to our heavenly home, that there would be birth pains. There would be signs on the earth that show us that things are going to progressively get worse. 
Is a, terrorist, is a terrorist nuclear attack still something to worry about 22 years after 9-11? It's hard to believe it's been 22 years. The short answer, unfortunately, is yes. If a terrorist group or a rogue state gets hold of such material from smugglers, they solve the most, single most difficult problem in building a bomb. We are posed on the brink of the most calamitous conflict that can be imagined. But when our sins are forgiven and we are living every day for Jesus Christ, we need to have no fear. He will guide us and he will protect us. Nothing, to, nothing is going to happen to us that is not in his will. Sign four, fragile peace agreements. 1 Thessalonians 5.3 says, For when they shall say peace and safety, then sudden destruction comes on them and they shall not escape. Look around at the shaky peace in Russia, Ukraine, China, Taiwan, and still with Iraq and the Middle East. China now looms as a major threat to the Western world. They are gaining the ability to cause havoc to our lives through technology. China owns TikTok. Some of you who follow this in the news have heard this, right? And the U.S. has now decided, because China owns TikTok and can gather all the information they want off of that site, that government employees and most state employees are forbidden to download and use the Chinese website TikTok. Sign five is famines. In a world with so much science, wealth, and education, we would think famines would be a thing of the past. Instead, they're growing in many countries. Matthew 24, verses 6 and 7 tells us there will be famines, pestilences, and earthquakes in various places. Approximately 57 million people die each year because of famine. This amounts to 156,000 people starve to death each day. Now, that's hard for us to believe living in the United States where we appear to be more gluttonous. We don't think about our neighbors starving to death. We have an abundance of food. Thank goodness we are willing to share the abundance, but we still have an abundance. All you have to do is look at the physical bodies of our people and see that we eat more than we actually need to in most cases. Um, we are one of the few places where we have still the ability to have plenty of food to eat. Of the world's population, 60% are malnourished and 20% are starving. You can imagine that we must be in that 20% at the top that are more gluttonous, that have more resources available to us. And this is a problem with a growing population. By 2050, the population is projected to be 9.5 billion. The UN 21 Goals of Sustainable Development believes that we need to control our population. China has in the past, as you know, they've controlled the population with their one-child policy. If you refuse to obey, you could be sterilized and be made to have an abortion. In 2015, they went to a two-child limit. They have obviously seen the devastating effects of limiting people to one child. In 2021, in May, China removed the fine and went to a three-child policy. And since then, they may have even removed that limit. But you can see that there is a need for some people to feel that we must control the population because we won't have enough food to feed the people. So people are looking at ways to control the population. Sign eight is pestilences. And in Matthew 24, verses six and seven, let's talk about what is a pestilence. 
the original word for pestilence in the New Testament language is Greek, and it means plague or disaster. 82.4 million people have been infected with AIDS, and over 40 million have died since AIDS entered the world in the 1980s. It continues to be a problem, but scientists have found medications to reduce the number of deaths. A real pestilence that we've all been involved with is COVID-19. We've lived through this one. We are living through it. The World Health Organization estimates 3 million people died worldwide from COVID-19. You may recognize other plagues that have hit us since we've been living on this earth, such as SARS, the Ebola virus, polio, malaria, and so forth. So our pestilence is increasing, yes, and we have lived through some now to be able to speak on that particular topic. Sign number seven, environmental pollution. Isaiah 51.6 tells us the earth will grow old like a garment. We know contamination and water pollution is a huge problem. Look at the train derailment that recently happened in Ohio and the toxic chemicals now in the ground. Look at the factories that dump waste into rivers, rivers that our drinking water come from a lot of those sources. They've been contaminated. Then we have to put chemicals in there to clean the chemicals out that are poisonous or bad for our health. By adding those chemicals, we even have to put a little tiny bit of poison in the water to be able to kill some of those things. We are ingesting that water. I don't know if you've ever had a water sample done at your home. I know sometimes, from time to time, some of the counties send out a water report on what your water has in it, and it will talk about all the contaminants in the water that you're drinking. They're small amounts. They're trace amounts. They feel like they don't affect your health. But do you believe that? So we have to understand that what we're living in is a time where the earth will grow old like a garment. We're wearing things out. The Bible says that Jesus will come to destroy those who destroy the earth, as we read a few moments ago. This doesn't mean just by nuclear weaponry and blowing up the earth, but any method that destroys the planet. Sign eight are signs in the sun, the moon, and the stars. Matthew 24, 29 says the sun will be darkened, the moon will not give its light, the stars will fall from heaven. Have these things happened? Yes. The dark day, as it's become known, took place on May 19, 1780 in New England and parts of eastern Canada. For the past 243 years, historians and scientists have argued over the origins of this strange event. Halfway through the morning, the sky turned yellow, birds went to nest and roost, and darkness then descended, causing people to light candles and start to pray. By lunchtime, night had fallen. People thought it was the end of the world. The moon became as red as blood on the night of the dark day in May 19, 1780. The Stone's History of Massachusetts says the moon, which was at its full, became as blood on the night of the dark day. Jesus said in Matthew 24, 29 that the stars would fall from heaven. Did this prophecy come true? Well, yes. The great star shower took place on the night of November 12th and 13th in 1833 across North America and far out to sea. For nearly four hours, the sky was so bright that you could read a newspaper. Men thought the end of the world had come. Take note that this is one of the very last signs given that the that's going to happen to the world before Jesus comes back. And it happened 190 years ago. 
We are living in the time of the end. I know we say that. And we say it and we warn people that we are living in the end times. Get ready. None of us knows the day or the time that Jesus will come. But we need to be prepared and be ready for that time. So we are living in the end times. And if you are lackadaisical about it and think, ah, you've been saying that for years, you don't want to be caught off guard Because the repercussions of you waiting and not doing something about your relationship with Christ and having that come upon you like a surprise is not going to be good news. Sign number nine he gave us was natural disasters. Other than earthquakes and tsunamis, tornadoes, for example. While there's been a recorded increase in the overall number of tornadoes that have been observed since 1950, scientists can find no link between tornadoes and global warming or other climate changes. No, because Jesus is the one that would tell us it would increase and he is in control of everything. Volcanic eruptions are also growing more and more frequent. Our only security truly is in Jesus Christ, knowing him as our friend and our savior. Jesus said to us, let not your heart be troubled. We learn the signs so we can know his coming is near. Sign number 10 is moral decay. It's so bad, we don't even know where to start with this one. I mean, you have got to have your eyes opened to understand that we are absolutely living in moral decay. Who could have ever imagine the state of our nation regarding morality? Ellie was telling me she went to a new eye doctor in Maryland in February. On the medical form, it asked, with which gender do you identify? And she wrote, this is too stupid to answer. <laughs> You got to know Ellie to know that she would put that on the form. (laughs) So we are living in an age where morals are out the window. People are confused. They don't even know whether they're a male or a female. Uh, this, This whole gender identity, it plays perfectly into Satan's hand. He would love nothing more than you to believe that the person God created you to be was wrong. He made a mistake. You weren't supposed to be a boy. You're supposed to be a girl. God is perfect. He doesn't make mistakes. You can talk yourself into anything you want to talk yourself into. And you can surround yourself with people who will tell you what you want to hear. But the truth comes from God and is found in the scripture. And it's very clear that he made Adam and Eve. He made man and woman. He made it very clear the purpose was procreation. And everything else is just confusion and deception by Satan. Jesus said in Matthew 24, 37, But as the days of Noah were, so also will the coming of the Son of Man be. You remember the story in Noah. He was preaching for 120 years, trying to get people to understand what God was telling them to be warned about. He warned them and warned them and warned them, and they were so lackadaisical, they were going on as though nothing was going to happen. Do you not think that's what's happening today? People have pushed this to the back as though nothing is going to happen. They were eating, drinking, marrying and giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered the ark. Genesis 6, 6 says that God repented that he had made man on the earth. How sad would God have to be that he would repent that he even created man? How sad would he be today if he looked at our wicked world in the number of ways we have been disobedient and dishonoring our God and our creator? In 1900, there was one divorce 
for every 12 marriages. A hundred years later, in 2000, there was one divorce for every two marriages. Today, many young people just don't even bother with getting married. They just live together. Is morality declining? Yes. For years, the birth rate for teens grew higher and higher. Today, they simply just go and have an abortion. The United States aborts almost one million babies a year. We wonder how painful this must be for God to see his created little ones being murdered and killed, and yet they're all so innocent. The Bible says in Genesis 6, 5, that every intent of the thoughts of man's heart was only evil continually. Actually, the world is so bad that I quit watching news. Everybody that knows me, and I've said it many times, the minute my husband turns on the news, I walk out of the room. I'm not doing it to insult him or make him mad. I just choose not to know because I know what's going on. God already told me how the world was going to be, and we're fulfilling it. I don't need the details. I know it's wicked, and I just, I'm not oblivious to it. I know it's going on, but I just choose not to focus on staring at that. I'd rather stare at the Word of God and see the hope that He gives us. I don't want to go into a tailspin of depression watching how bad things are, because the news is mainly going to report on it if it's bad. So I don't need to focus my thoughts on all the bad that's going in the world. I'd rather focus my thoughts on all the goodness that God gives us through hope that he's coming back to rescue us and the things that we can do to put on God's character and be more like him. That's where my mind share is. I will open up a book that leads me to be more like Christ versus staring at the wickedness on the TV screen. Sign number 11, rising crime and violence. Nobody is safe. We all know that. Our streets aren't safe. Our schools are not safe. Colleges are not safe. Our only safety is found in Jesus. And it comes from the angels that Jesus sends to protect us when we ask through prayer. Genesis 6.11 says, The earth also was corrupt before God, and the earth was filled with with violence. Do you feel like we're living in that time? Ellen White says, neither the marriage relation nor the rights of property were respected. Whoever coveted the wives or the possessions of a neighbor just took them by force and men exulted in their deeds of violence. That comes from Patriarchs and Prophets on page 92. Disputes, which were once settled with fists between kids, are now settled with guns. Or rioting and looting. So you can just take whatever you want. It's all there for you. Lawlessness has again appeared and maybe perhaps has never left, but it is certainly increasing we see this in our world. It gets magnified, and then other people think, well, this is a great idea. I think I'll do that too because I want some free stuff. And it's just making the world more and more wicked. Sign number 12, an attitude of skepticism. Remember Jesus' prophecy that they did not know until the flood came and took them all away. Again, Noah preached for 120 years, and what did people do? They laughed at him. 2 Peter 3.3 says, Scoffers will come in the last days, saying, Where is the promise of his coming? Look at the people today that are making fun of Christians, scoffing at biblical beliefs. 
Did you see a couple of weeks ago the FBI labeled traditional Catholics as racist, white supremacist, and violent? But they didn't explain how they were racist or violent and instead only cited their stance on LGBTQ issues and on abortion. So Christians who don't fall in line with the political agenda will be persecuted. Sign number 13 is lovers of pleasure. Second Timothy 3, 4 says, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. Look at sports stadiums. Look at casinos that are all jammed with people who would be bored to tears if they had to sit in a church service. How little thought is given to God in our world. It is driven by pleasure, money, and material things. Those are the temporary pleasures that this world has seemed to make a priority in their lives. Research shows that 28% of all alcoholics are under the age of 18. Many teens are struggling with drug addiction. Fentanyl is the single deadliest drug threat that our nation has ever encountered. In 2021, 107,622 people died from a fentanyl overdose. Marijuana continues to be rampantly used and now legalized in many places, and the young people are taunted and made fun of if they refuse to use. The media and movies have glorified sex, immorality, and drug use. They're glorifying alternate lifestyles as in the thing to be and do. Everything Jesus said is happening all around us. For the first time in history, we're seeing every sign increase in, in its occurrence. So we know he's coming soon. In labor, as your birth pains get closer and closer together, you know the big event is coming. And the same thing is happening with these signs. We're watching prophecy being fulfilled right before our eyes. Even the world has begun to talk about prophecy. They're wondering what is going to happen. They have a feeling that something is not right with our world, and they know that there is something impending that's got to happen to change the tide of where we are going. Sign number 14, economic uncertainty. Have you heard yet about programmable money? How about money that has an expiration date? It's becoming the new normal in China. Now, our president has issued an executive order 14067 titled Ensuring Responsible Development of Digital Assets. Our president has ordered the U.S. to do some research of a central bank digital currency. Programmable money is a new technology currently being tested by nine major financial institutions in America. It will enable them to monitor, analyze, and research our spending. They say the purpose of this is to keep people from money laundering and, and doing all kinds of sex trafficking. They'll be able to see money flowing in and flowing out and knowing exactly how it's being spent where it's being spent. They are getting to the point where they can actually control how you will spend your money eventually. If they can track your spending, they certainly can control it. If they can put an expiration date on your money, then it's use it or lose it, right? We all know that, that train of thought. 
On November 15, 2022, the federal government asks our financial institutions to begin testing a program that will allow the government to roll out the digital dollar, possibly even by later this year, exactly as China is doing. When the digital currency was rolled out and implemented in China, their government implemented procedures such as social credit scores, expiring digital money spend. It had to be spent by a specific date or it disappears forever. Tracking up to 50,000 data points on each person. Talk about knowing your business, knowing everything about you, and knowing how your money is spent. James 5, verses 1 through 5 says, Now listen, you rich people, weep and wail because of the misery that is coming upon you. Your wealth has rotted, and moths have eaten your clothes. Your gold and silver have corroded. You have hoarded wealth in the last days. Look, the wages you failed to pay your workmen who mowed your fields are crying out against you. The cries of the harvesters have reached the ears of the Lord Almighty. You have lived on earth in luxury and self-indulgence. It would seem that God is going to let conditions occur to the point that mankind has no control over their money. Revelation 13, verses 16 and 17. And the second beast, that's the land beast that we identified in prophecy in previous prophecy seminars, that's identified as the United States of America, required all people, small and great, rich and poor, free and slave, to receive a mark on their right hand or on their forehead so that no one could buy or sell unless he had the mark. The name of the beast or the number of his name. It will be America who leads the way in creating a system in which nobody can buy or sell without oversight. It says so right there in prophecy. It has begun the preparatory work to get this type of system going in the United States is going on. It has begun. The testing has begun. I would Fathom to guess, most people might be hearing about this new bill that was just signed because so much happens without us paying any attention. Our government is doing things we have no idea about, and things get passed that we have no input or say in. So we have to be diligent, we have to be aware, but we can be very comforted knowing that God is with us. We do not need to worry and fear, but we need to pay attention. The part that concerns me is we are so busy, and most of us, like myself included, and I'm guilty, I have always been one that has prepared for my future. I have always put money away. Since I was 14 years old and made my first dollar, I put money away. I believed in storing money for your future, for your retirement years. I did that my whole life. And they said, if you do it when you're young, when you're older, you do not have to worry. So yes, some of us have money saved in retirement accounts because we don't believe the government will have enough money to pay us to live on in our later years, the way things are going and the debt that we're in. So God says, be careful. He doesn't want us storing up so much that we're depending on ourselves and our income. God is saying, depend on me. I will take care of you so that people don't get frantic if their money disappears. Us who have depended on money to live a decent life good life are dependent on that. And if that disappears, people get frantic 
They don't know what to do. We've been dependent on it our whole life. But does not God take us to those places to get us to depend on him? What does it take for God to get our attention to say, depend wholly on me? He doesn't see, say be unwise and be, you know, throwing your money away. He wants it invested in the kingdom and invested in the things that help his people. But he does say beware because if you get too dependent on material things and get dependent on your money and your money disappears in the future if the governments take over, it gets scary. My husband was saying there's a bank in California. Some of you might not. If you watch the news, I don't. So I get it secondhand. But there was a bank in California that collapsed, and people are frantic because they have no access to any of their money. The bank went into foreclosure, and it's a large bank. We're not talking a little mom-and-pop bank. And they have no money and no access to any of the money as they foreclosed or went bankrupt or whatever it is they did, but the doors are closed. How would you react to that? Would you get so frantic and crazy that you felt like you don't know the next minute how you're going to survive? Is that what it's going to take for God to get your attention and say, please, Depend on me. I love you. You know me. I know you. I've proven time and time again in your life that I'm there for you. I have carried you through things you have no idea I carried you through, and I will carry you through the next crisis. We have to get to the point we're completely dependent on God, and I don't know what it's going to take. I hope that it doesn't take this financial crisis to bring you to your knees and pray to God and ask God to lead you through this crisis. But it's here. It's here and it's happening and there's a lot going on behind the scenes that we are not even aware of. But we have hope that Jesus says, don't worry about tomorrow. I will provide. And we have to learn to live by that. We have to really get dependent on God. Sign number 15, the gospel will go to the whole world. This is why I believe God gave mankind the intelligence to create the Internet and all the technology needed to enable it. Now, some of you may think the Internet was a horrible thing. It's got people addicted to it. It's showing all kinds of ugly things. You can get your hands on videos of all kinds, many which are not good and not healthy and break every commandment. That's not a good thing, but it can be used for good. God gave man the intelligence to create this environment so that he could spread his word across the globe. We know from our radio station there are people listening in Africa. We know there are people listening from all over the world. So every Friday night when our church leaders get on a call and pray, every Friday night we ask for God to protect our church, our sanctuary, our, his people, our technology, because we know technology is so important as a medium for spreading God's word. In Matthew 24, 14, it says, And the gospel of the kingdom will be preached in all the world as a witness to all the nations, and then the end will come. We now live in a world where... A word can be sent around the world in seconds. That's amazing. Even in third world countries, they have radios, they have internet, they have satellite capability, and they can hear the gospel of Jesus Christ. And we thank our Lord that he's given people the gift of tongues so they can translate God's word into their local language. The purpose for the gift of tongues is to be able to have every people on the earth to be able to hear God's word in their language. A man who lived in New York City said that he had become so accustomed at night to the constant noise of sirens, he could sleep right through them directly beneath his window. Is there danger that we have come to the point and the place 
that we have constantly heard about these alarms that we just covered, that Jesus is warning us that we are living in the end times, that we now no longer pay attention? Have we become immune to these sirens? Have we become immune to his word? Do we feel that we've heard it for so long that we no longer even believe it or we've moved it out of our consciousness? In 1 Thessalonians 5, verses 2 through 4, it says, For yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. For when they shall say, Peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them as travail upon a woman with the child. And they shall not escape, but ye, brethren are not in darkness, that the day should overtake you as a thief. If God says so, you better be prepared. He has told us clearly, if you read Matthew 24, these are the signs that will occur before I come. They are occurring in greater frequency. We are living in these signs of the times because Jesus is coming ready or not. None of us know when, so you better be ready. Have we surrendered our lives to him? Have we truly gotten to the point that we know him? Not that we read our Bible, we go to church, amen, and we do all these things that make us feel like we're being holy. Do you truly have a relationship with God? Do you cry out to God for your needs? Do you pray to him daily, multiple times of day, because you are so dependent on him to get through each day? It really requires that kind of faith and that kind of relationship with God to be ready. Because I tell you, it's going to get worse before it gets better, and we as Christians cannot be the ones running around with our hands in the air, acting like the world is coming to an end, and we're unprepared. We, of all people, should be prepared. And people should see us and say, wow, look at them. They must know something I don't know. And there is your opportunity to witness. Amen?